Ioli, and you're watching Power Talks, Wise Words from Wise Women. In this video series, women at the top of their game share their wisdom and their experience with you. I'm thrilled to have Dita Shimke as my, as my guest today. Dita is currently the chair for the Global Conversation on Board Diversity for Orange County, California, as part of the 5050 Women on Boards campaign. She works as a financial advisor at Stiefel Financial Corporation and is a strong advocate for women's leadership and women's empowerment. Dita, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Janet, for the invitation. I am thrilled to be part of the impressive group of women <laughs> on your show who have shared their stories, passions, and successes in supporting other women. And um, it's, it's amazing to be here. Thank you. I know you're a passionate advocate for women's leadership and women's empowerment. I mean, we've talked about that. And I know you're quite involved in the National 5050 Women on Boards Initiative. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later and what that is for our viewers. But let me just ask you, let's start kind of at the beginning. What prompted you to become interested in supporting women or other women? Oh, that's a great question. It's always interesting to hear the backstory, right? Exactly. Of how you got here. So for me, it takes me back so many years when I was going through my divorce. At that time, I had a son who was under 10. I was divorcing a lawyer. <laughs> so my new female boss, I had a new job, asked me one day, since you are divorcing a lawyer, don't you think you should be talking to one? <laughs> I told her, yeah, I should, but I don't know of one. I don't know where to get one. And so she mentioned that UCI Women's Center may be able to help. So I called them up and hoping to get a referral, but instead they recommended I take this class called uh, the legal aspects of divorce. Mm -hmm. So I remember it today as if it was yesterday. I was in a room full of women. Both groups had one thing in common. They had no visible means of supporting themselves and were totally dependent on just what their exes can provide or toss their way. That's when it hit me. Wow, I'm so lucky. I had this great new job. Actually, I was earning more than my husband at that time. I can support myself and my son. And I did not have to settle for just the obligatory child support or alimony for my soon-to-be ex. I remember feeling on top of the world, so encouraged. And I started thinking, if I can only make another woman feel this way, empowered, wouldn't that be a great thing? So that was the beginning of my personal journey to helping other women become more self-sufficient. That this whole concept and notion of the financial independence and being able to really support yourself. I mean, we, we don't always talk about this. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, it's interesting how that was a, that catalyst brought you even further into what you're doing into your career. Cause I do know that you support women in, in, your financial advising as well, right? Yeah. Things happen for a reason, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, thank you for sharing that. So, so, okay. So you have an interest in women's empowerment. What caused you to get involved in this campaign for women on boards? Because, you know, obviously there's a national campaign to get women, more women on board. So what caused your interest in that? Well, I would have to say throughout history, women have fought for what's rightfully theirs. So it was just last year that we celebrated 100 years anniversary of women's right to vote. Mm -hmm. So almost um, as long ago, 100 years ago, the Equal Rights Amendment, ERA, was first proposed. 48 years later, after that, it was passed by the U.S. Senate and sent to the states for ratification. It needed 38 states to do that. It took another 50 years, and just this year, in January of this year, they got the 38th state to ratify it. And that was the state of Virginia. So maybe with a female, uh, first female vice president in the White House, this will soon pass, right? But in my view, 50-50 women on boards, it's just like this historic campaigns. What we are aiming to do will change the landscape of how business is conducted now and in the future. It will give women appropriate representation in the top echelons of business, companies that provide products and services that we consume as women. 
From the time of my divorce, when my journey to empower women started, I continually look for opportunities that can provide me with a larger platform to serve more women. Companies who want to be relevant need to pay closer attention to women as direct consumers of goods and services, and as investors who purchase stocks in their companies, in their 401ks. The board of directors is the governing body which makes policy that's implemented throughout the organization, impacting decisions and actions that affect women as employees, as consumers, and as investors. Policies also dictate how a business should behave outside the company in issues dealing with the environment and social matters. So this is the reason why I got involved. It really is the place to be, and it is the right time. Yeah. See, and I don't think people really understand that or, under, or really conceptualize how important that board is in corporations. And I think you know, you describing that is, is really, really important. Well, yes, I just said that, the, uh, I just indicated that the board is the ultimate right. place to be if you want to affect. Right. The, important changes in the way the companies behave and act on what's in the best interest for all stakeholders, not just for women. Now, let me ask you this, you know, just practically, because, you know, we talk about, yes, it's important to be on a board. We talk about women being on boards, but how does one go about getting to be on a board? And can you provide some tips? You've, you're obviously involved in this daily. So can you talk a little bit about, I want to be on a board. How do I do that? What do I do? It's important to understand that boards are looking for expertise, not just experience. And no headhunter will seek you out if you have no experience serving on corporate boards. So you can actually approach your search using the strategic planning process. I'm a strategist. I <laughs> majored in that in, in, um, in my master's program. And I use it every day in how I deal with my clients when I put together their plans. So begin with the end in mind, right? And then figure out the steps you will need to get there. So I have three tips that I want to share. Mm -hmm. So the first is do your homework. If you're really interested, do your homework, do some reading. Um, find out what it means to be on a paid board. What are the qualifications? What's expected? Then if you think you want to proceed after this, take an assessment of your qualifications to serve on a board. Do you have what it takes? Having said that, women have a tendency to play down their strengths, right? Yes, it's been said good. that if a job requires yes. 10 things, a man will apply if he has three or four, but a woman will wait until or will not apply unless she has most of it or not, or all of it. And the second tip is um, get certified. There are many board readiness programs out there that can provide you with the credentials and the network that you will need to get to help you get to your goal. But being certified reaffirms that you are a serious contender. If two female board applicants are neck to neck, more often than not, than not, the one who gets the job is the one with the credentials. And I just also wanted to say that 50, 50 women on boards also has two training programs for different levels of readiness that can provide you with the initial steps of finding out what being on a board is about and where you fit. And the third and uh, also the most important or maybe equally important is tip is network, network, network. So your personal network will serve you well in your search, just like with your other jobs, especially for your first board position. The more people who knows that you are interested in serving on a board, the greater your chances are of getting there. So having said that, don't use a shotgun approach, right? Be intentional in your outreach. And it's not just those who can potentially make the right introductions that matters. It's also important to build a network of like-minded women who can be your allies and can provide support and encouragement and hold you accountable for what you say you want to achieve. Finding your first board position is like looking for a high-level uh, job. It takes the same discipline, planning, systematic approach, and a whole lot of networking. There's that word again, networking. It's, it's interesting because I find, at least in my work, I, I work with obviously a lot of corporate women executives, and 
that seems to be an area where so many women don't spend time on. You know, they're doing so much internally in their company, but they're not looking outward. And from, you know, what I'm hearing you and everybody that I talk to about networking is how important that is just for other things, not just internal, you know, not just to be focused internally. Now, let me, let me ask you this, because this comes up a lot when I talk about, when, when I talk about getting on a board, what comes up is, well, you know, I'm balancing a demanding career. I've got a family, I've got my personal life. And now if I add being on a board, you know, unless I'm retiring, how do I add being on a board on top of all of this? So what advice do you have for women leaders who are, who are thinking about this dilemma? Is, I don't know if I can do all of this. But it's no secret that in order to be successful outside the home, you need good support system inside the home, right? I think that closer to the truth is that women who are ready to take on board roles are those who have gained an awful lot of expertise that comes from having the right experiences. So in other words, uh, during earlier, earlier career days, when it's logical for women to have responsibilities of a young family, it doesn't factor into the equation for most women who are ready to take on board roles. So let me just share with you a very recent um, study that's done by Spencer Stewart, the executive search firm. They reported that although boards are adding younger directors, the average age of boards is actually, has remained the same since 2009. 70% of S&P 500 independent directors are 60 or older. Mm, so for, for the new um, independent directors, the average age is 57.8. And the average age of S&P 500 independent director in total is 63. So think about that for a minute. So in order for you to get there, you, you would have had, you know, half of your life gone. <laughs> so having younger kids and having to balance that kind of issues when you're, when you uh, are starting out in a family doesn't come into play. Right. It's, not, of, right. it's not that it's impossible, right? So it, just because something is a certain way doesn't mean it always has to be that certain way. But what I'm hearing you say is it makes it more difficult. Yeah. Right. It it's makes harder. it more difficult. Yeah. Right. And also to have the qualifications you need to get there, but also just your own juggling. I mean, just this issue that I brought up. Yeah. But when you, when you sign on to be on a board, you are essentially on call. And this is something that uh, people don't understand. You know, when you, when you serve on a nonprofit board, it's, it's a totally different playing field. Uh, when you are in a paid board position, you are on call. You're like a doctor. Yeah. Uh, when there's an emergency, you drop whatever and, and you go, right? At regular board meetings, you are required to show up informed and prepare. That is the job that you signed up for. But regardless of where you are in your life, in your family life, taking on any additional roles will require the mindset and the honesty to ask yourself these three important questions. Is this really what I want? Is this the right time for me? Will my family support my choice? Because they are, whether you like it or not, they are part of the picture. That's, that's really, that's really good advice. I, um, I, you know, I talk to people who want to be on a board or talk, they, just because they hear it, you know, they hear, oh, I, I should have a board position on my resume. And I, I like that your, your practical advice here is that, okay, it's not just a resume booster. There is a lot of responsibility in it. They call on you all the time, depending on what's happening in the company. So I think that's a, that's a really important point and practical point that you bring up. You know, obviously this is a great topic and you've given some really wise advice here and tips. What other parting words of wisdom do you have to a woman who's looking to have a board position or get on a board? Do you have anything else to add that you haven't talked about? Because you did talk about a lot. Oh, I always uh, have this one, one saying or one thing that I all, one piece of advice that I always say to anybody, regardless of what it is that you're trying to do, be true to who you are. If you have the passion and the wherewithal to be part of a generation of women that will once again change history in the way business is conducted, let that be your guide. Align yourself with the right people 
and arm yourself with the right tools to help you get there. Like I said earlier, I look at this time in history as similar to the start of the women's movement, mm -hmm. or better yet, like 100 years ago when women were first granted the right to vote. Mm -hmm. We are paving the way for other women to follow our footsteps to a time when having women in the boardroom is no longer the exception, but the norm. Think about that for a minute. It's the norm, it's expected, right? We are beginning to see this concept being, being institutionalized, that women belong in the, in the boardroom. When California passed their law, Bloomberg wrote an article that essentially said that if other, the other 49 states follow California's lead, it will create, listen to this, 3,732 openings on public company boards for women to fit, fill. You gotta have that many women ready and in line to take on, right? So um, last year also NASDAQ admit, uh, submitted a proposal to the SEC for all listed companies in the exchange to have at least one woman plus one gender and minority representative on the board. And the penalty, they can be delisted for non-compliance. And for the first time in 20 years, all of the S&P 500 boards have at least one woman. Wow. That is quite an accomplishment. That is quite an accomplishment. And having women on boards in corporate America is not just timely, it is good for business. We are in the beginning stages of a new revolution in business, and it is not going to go away, um, judging by what I've just mentioned. Ask yourself this very important question. How many times in your lifetime will you have the opportunity to be part of history in the making? Why not be part of the change? Wow, wise words from a wise woman. I love this, Dita. Thank you. Uh, I will say one thing as you were talking, um, the one thing that kind of stands out to me is also it doesn't matter where you are in your career is being prepared, you know, and getting prepared. And so you can be earlier in career and getting the experience, you know, it's almost like a, it's like a chain and, you know, that chain informs the rest of the chain. And that's, that can be part of the revolution. Also, you don't have to actually be on the board in order to, to help uh, move that chain along is from what right. I Right. And, and remember yeah. that we were almost caught by surprise, right? Because this is not really part of our career path. It's not right. a career option for women. Now it's becoming a career option. Right. So the ones who are younger and who really wants this to be a part of their career can now start preparing to make sure that they're in line for that. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, make sure that you, like I said, you network with the same people. You, if you're surrounded with the same people, you're with the same people who want the same things, then it's a lot easier for you to carve out that path for yourself. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Dita, for this. I mean, such an informative power talk today. I really appreciate your wisdom and you sharing all your knowledge with us. I think this will be very beneficial for people watching it who are interested in boards, who may not know anything about how to go about doing, you know, getting themselves on a board and also to preparing for a board at a later time in, in their future. So thank you again so much. You're very welcome. I hope uh, you um, spread the word in terms of what are, we are doing in Orange County for 50-50 women on boards. We are having our largest event November 16 of this year and more on that to come. And uh, I will be happy to share that with you and your audience. Yeah, thank you so much. So appreciated. Uh -huh.